Welcome to another Messianic Moment. Today I want to share with you that there's no good news till you face the bad news. The similarities between the pre-flood world and 2023 are astounding. The Bible says that men shall wax worse and worse not get better. We're spiraling downward. We're not evolving. The Bible speaks of a great falling away and apostasy. Just before Messiah returns. Men will not endure sound doctrine. They will turn away their ears from the truth. Isn't that what's happening all around us? We need to be upfront with the gospel. It's the truth that sets men free. We shouldn't try to trick people into getting saved. Yeshua always encouraged people to count the cost of following him. Hallelujah. <laughs> New evangelicalism is saying we need to entertain, to make people feel good, to water down our message, to slip the truth in on them somewhere along the way after they're hooked. But we're not supposed to hide the gospel. We're supposed to preach it. Our job is not to make the gospel appealing, but to make the gospel available. Not to make people feel good, but to make them feel God. By the way, the first note of the gospel is not a happy note. It's that all have sinned and come up short. This is not good news. But there's no good news until you face the bad news. True spirituality doesn't work its way from the outside in, but from the inside out. Don't misunderstand. I'm not saying we should throw out our standards. I'm not saying we should forget Torah. What I am saying is just don't go legalistic, allowing your attitude to be one of superiority to everybody else. It's the difference between being inhibited by rules and inhabited by the rule maker. Christianity has made a major turn in recent years and never more than the last few years to prosperity preaching and the social gospel of just being happy and becoming a better and better person and letting God bless you more and more. It's an all positive message with no stepping on toes allowed. They've decided to go that direction in their lives and in their churches, so they have to build a doctrine and manufacture scriptural support for it. They do all kinds of hermeneutical gymnastics, trying to stretch the Bible to say what they want it to say. If God has blessed you materially, enjoy it in the right balance. God has given us richly of all things to enjoy, but true spirituality recognizes the best riches God has given to us is not money, is not material things, but true riches that moth and rust don't touch. The key is, do you own your possessions or do they own you? Do you control your finances for God's glory or do they control and steer you and your life? Some believers would be better off if they never could have afforded that vehicle or that boat or that big screen because of the way those things have changed them and have stealthily crept up and taken over. I want to share a couple of scriptures with you. Matthew 15, 33, Yeshua said, The kingdom of heaven is like hummets, which a woman took and hid in three measures of flour until it was all leavened. The second is 1 Corinthians 5, 6. Your boasting is no good. Don't you know a little hummus leavens the whole batch of dough? Hummus is sin. It's like a bad apple. It ruins the barrel. God delivered the Hebrews from Pharaoh in Egypt, and he delivered us from sin and death, and that's worthy of a hallelujah. Pesach represents our salvation and deliverance by the sacrifice of the Lamb of God, Yeshua the Messiah. We are justified by trusting in the sacrificial blood of the Lamb. Hag HaMatzot represents our sanctification as we rid ourselves of the old leaven of Egypt and die to our carnal nature. 
Rashid Katsir or Yom Habikarim, the Feast of First Fruits, represents the resurrection of Yeshua, our Mashiach, our Messiah, and our future glorified state as part of the coming harvest of God at the end of the age. The resurrection of Yeshua the Messiah demonstrates that his sacrifice for our sin was accepted by God. When God raised Yeshua from the dead, he absolved the substitute of the sins he bore. The sin imputed to him was left in the grave, so to speak. And the resurrection therefore confirms Yeshua's triumphant word to Telestai. It is finished, paid in full. The resurrection declares that the king of all kings has pardoned you and me and constitutes proof that God has accepted Messiah's payment for your sins. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Yeshua the Messiah, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope because of the resurrection of Yeshua the Messiah from the dead. Peter Chapter 1, verse 3. Why not start each day by thanking the Lord for all he's done, all he's going to do for you and your family as you walk in his ways. This has been another Messianic moment. God bless you all. Until next time, Shalom, Shalom. of the risen